Hey guys, welcome to the channel Learning Comparative Programming with Coach. So, if you want to learn data structures and algorithms and master comparative programming, this is the prime location for you. Every week there are several videos regarding the editorial videos of the Code Chef contest as well as the videos which will help you to upgrade yourself in comparative programming. Right, so if you are new to the channel, then please do subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification. Myself, Chirayu Jan, I am a Code Chef educator. And we are starting up with the concept videos. So the topic that we are going to take today is binary search. Okay, so let us understand the concept of binary search with the help of an interesting example. So here are two boys in front of you. One is saying that guess my birthday month and other one is trying it. Right. So what the second one does is he tries to guess the birthday month in a sequential order. So he starts with January. The answer is no. Then Feb. Again the answer is no. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October is also now, and the November is the month. Right. So in the sequential order, right starting from January, he started asking him the questions. Right. So is January your birthday? Is February your birthday month? Is March your birthday month? So the answer was constantly no. And at the November, the answer was yes. So this is the first approach that he took by taking one month at a time and asking him the question, right? So the number of question he asked right from January till the November was 11 questions, which denotes the 11 months. Is it the right way to ask the question? What is the optimal way in which we can minimize the number of question and get an answer? So the second one tried an interesting way out from there, right? So what second one does is he asked him that I can guess your birthday month in less number of questions. So the second one replies, okay, cool, you can ask me. So what was his question? Does your birthday month comes in first six months? Right, so he asked him a question that is your birthday in first six months? So he replied the answer is no. This results all the first six months into the cancellation. So he need not to ask any of the questions regarding these months. Now, what is the second question? So in the last six months, is your birthday coming in the first three months? That is July, August and September. So the answer was yes. What it denotes is that the last three months are cancelled. Right. So you can see the number of possibilities are decreasing in a halfway manner. Right. At every iteration, half of the possibility is reduced. Now, what was the third question? The third question was, so in these three months, is your birthday coming in the first two months? The answer was again a no. That typically means July and August are cancelled and the birthday month is September, which is the remaining month, right? So you see that in three questions, he just identify his birthday month, that is September, right? So what does this trick uh, give you an intuition of? This trick gives you that if there are certain order present and if we ask if we ask correct question then at each question the number of possibilities are reduced right half of the possibilities is gone and that's where the intuition of binary search comes into right so by this example we can clearly get an idea of what we are doing and how we are getting into the concepts of binary search so this example is like a question and answer example regarding to the concept of binary search. Now we will look into what are the technical definitions and terminologies related to binary search. So let's get started. Okay, so now let us understand technically what binary search means. So we have gone through the examples which we can relate to this concept of binary search. So now let us understand what exactly it means and what we need to learn in it, right? So first going to the definition of binary search that what binary search is binary search is an algorithm to search a number in a sorted array so it is very important to note that it is a sorted array in which we are searching a number right the first condition now what does binary search do so binary search works on the principle of reducing the search space the space in which we are searching a number is a search space in each step by half right so what it does is it reduces the search space by half and thus giving the complexity as log n. So what is the time complexity for binary search? That is log n. So we will derive how we are getting the 
time complexity login for binary research so we'll see in detail about the time complexity but the first thing is to understand why we are learning binary search correct so now why we are using binary search right so earlier what we used to have is a linear search we are having a linear search so what does linear search do linear search searches an element in a linear manner by checking one element after another so let us say if we are finding element if we are finding element 13 in this particular array right so what does linear search do we will iterate over the whole array one by one and traversing the element one by one right so first we will see this element if it matches with the 13 then it's okay we'll break out from the array otherwise we will see the second element so we'll see this element then this element then this element then this element and then this element right so we got this particular element and then we finally break out and we'll see that at index what we can make the index 0 1 2 3 4 5 that is zero based indexing so at index 5 we got our element that is 30 so this is the linear search process at worst case we need to travel the whole array let us say if we are finding the element 29 so we need to travel the whole array so what does binary search do in this particular case it reduces the time complexity of searching the whole array to log n time complexity let us say if we have n elements right so how many number of elements do we have in this array that is uh, 5 6 7 8 9 10 so 10 elements we have right so we need to search 10 times right right starting from this particular index 0 we'll search 10 times in binary search what we need to do what will be, what will be the time complexity that is log base to n that essentially simplifies to log base to 10 in this particular case right so this will be the time complexity okay so how we can apply binary search over here is let us see so this is the linear search right time complexity will be order of n where n denotes the number of elements right so in linear search we got time complexity as the time complexity of linear search is order of n sorry the time complexity of linear search is order of n right so we understood why this is order of n but in binary search we are saying that at each step the possibility is reduced to half let's see how so if we are finding an element let us say 13 we are finding right so what we will do what we will do we'll just see since it is a sorted array other uh, i am mentioning this point again and again because this is the important thing to have since it is a sorted array so first what we will do we'll find the midsection right we'll go at the midsection and we will see that whether the number we are finding comes to the left section or to the right section so we are at the mid now what is the mid here this is particular position is the mid so we are at this element so first we will see that the element which we are finding comes to this particular section or the remaining section right this is the important thing since it is a sorted array all the elements after this particular element will be greater than this element or all the elements before this element is smaller right so this is the importance of sorted array in binary search right so we know that 13 is greater than 11 so obviously it will lie in this particular section not in this section so this whole section is removed this whole section is removed we need not to search these elements to find our particular element right so in this particular section we need to find the element right so in the first step in step number one our possibility is reduced to half so in only five elements we need to search now from 10 elements the search space is reduced to five elements in the first step only, right now in the second step we will find again the midpoint always we will go at the midpoint of the search space right so if this is a search space this is a search space then we'll always go to the midpoint right so after seeing the midpoint we will ask again the search space so tell me that this particular element which we need to search is on the left side of the search space that means lesser than the particular element mid element or the greater than the mid element right so it will reply that it is lesser than the mid element so in this particular search space we need to look 
right from five elements now our search space has become of two elements correct right so from five elements our search space uh, our search space is now of two element right and now when we go again into this search space so we'll find the mid right so now the mid comes at this particular position and we will check that whether the mid is the element or not so here in this case mid is the element right so the mid element is 13 only right so we got our answer in three simple steps that at which position our number is right so this is how the binary search is working now it is a very efficient approach when we see the comparison of time complexity so the time complexity of binary search is order of log n right so this is the efficient approach now we will see that how we are calculating that this time uh, complexity is order of log n so we'll understand with the help of a diagram that why we are getting the log n time complexity okay guys so now let us analyze the time complexity right so in first what do we have is the search space of n right so in a search space of n elements we are searching an element right now what we do is we find the mid and we will see that whether the element lies in the left part of the mid or the right part of the mid right so let us say that we divided the whole n search space into two parts that is n by 2 which is for the left side and n by 2 which is for the right side right and our element lies in this right side now this whole left side is not useful for us so this whole left side is reduced right and now we are searching the element in this particular right side now again we uh, divide this particular search space into two parts that is again the half of this particular search space that is what will be the half of n by 2 that is n by 2 divided by 2 which will be equal to n by 4 correct so our search space is divided into n by 4 parts n by 4 uh, size uh, two uh, parts of n by 4 size right so this is the part left and this is the part right so now let's say that our element lies in the left part right so again we divide this particular search space into two parts that is n by 8 and n by 8 again we are dividing in a half of the size of this particular search space right so we'll continue doing this until we get our element so until we get the value 1 which is only the single element we'll use we'll divide the search space into half of the element right so let us say at this particular ith step we get a single element right so as we can see this can be written as n upon 2 to the power 0 this can be written as n upon 2 to the power 1 this can be written as n upon 2 to the power 4 and this can be written as n upon 2 to the power 3 so let's say at n upon 2 to the power ith step because these are the number of steps this was the 0th step this is the first step this is the sorry 2 to the power 2 here right not 2 to the power 4 2 to the power 2 so this is the second step and this is the third step so let us say at particular ith step we got a single element right we got a single element so what is the equation now that is n upon 2 to the power i is equal to one single element right so multiplying both the sides with 2 to the power i what we will get that n is equal to 2 to the power i correct and now when we take the log then what will be the result i will be equal to log of n on the base 2 right so what are we doing is we are calculating the number of steps so this, this was the step 1 this was the step 2 like if we are starting it with uh, index 0 so this was the steps 0 step 1 step 2 step 3 until step i so what was i i is log n on the base 2 right so this is the number of steps that we got after the whole bifurcation of our search space into two equal parts so ultimately what we need to count we need to count the steps only right so what is the step coming that is this step this number of steps that is log n on the base 2 so that's why we got a time complexity as log n time complexity right 
So this is how we are reducing the search space and we're getting this 10 concepted. Right, so in your understanding, as well as when you face the question of binary search, now you are clear with the approach, like the understanding of basic introduction to binary search. We'll, in the later video, we'll see that how we can formulate the recursive approach, iterative approach, and we'll try the question also on binary search. But it is very important to clear the basics of the binary search that how we are forming a concept of binary search, what are the behind scenes of binary search, how it, we are getting into the time complexity, what are the basic understanding and why do we require the binary search. So these are all some basic basic things of binary search which I accumulated in this particular video. In the later videos of this particular series, we'll uh, go through the recursive solution first, then the iterative and then we'll solve the problem. Right. So this is the time complexity and we have gone through the understanding. So thank you for watching the video guys. If you like the efforts and the content, then please, please do hit the like button and you can write your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to know more updates regarding the video, then you can join our telegram group. The link to the telegram group is in the description. So I'll see you in the next part.